Welcome to French Property Renovations and this morning I've been doing some pointing on the front of my house, continuing on with that and all I can hear, only what, 30 metres away, thud, thud. And what it is, it's these conkers dropping from the trees. I can hear the ones where they drop, they're just shelf. So I'm going to have a little talk about trees, wood, conkers and may eight acres and what I'm going to do with it. And because I'm a plumber, my knees are not so clever. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this. That is like a paddle. It's just one piece of wood, circle with a pointy bit. And this is a carved back with a hole in it. It's African, like a tribal seat, I think. So I'm going to sit on that, save my knees, whilst I chit chat in general. So I'm into uh, sweat equity and trying to build some equity up in this property and uh, I'm going to sell it and you're wondering why is he going to sell it? Eight acres living in France? Bliss! Well I love trees I have to say and I find them phenomenally beautiful uh, they give us oxygen to breathe to help in the uh, climate change if we were to grow more and I just like them so I want something Ideally, my next step up is going to be something with more buildings to renovate and probably a bit more land where I can grow some trees, plant, plant some trees even, create some walks for the future and leave something of a bit of a legacy there. And uh, that's the, my idea, ideal. And coming to France, I watched quite a few YouTube videos on permaculture where it's good for the animals, where instead of having one great big open field we've got a field that's full of trees which offers some shade for the animals be it cows horses sheep whatever it is so i've got two full grown trees that are in a good good standing and uh, producing fruit nuts whatever you want to call them and i've noticed with this conker tree that i'm getting more conkers on the east side which is the side the sun comes up uh, and probably not the hottest I would have said whereas the southerly aspect of the tree is giving me less which will get most of the sun during the, uh, the daytime and the west side is getting probably the same as the south but the north facing side I'm not getting very much fruit, fruit on that at all but these have been on the floor now, and this is this is the harvest, shall we call it, so far. So there's quite a few. I bet we're 50, 50, 60, and that's what I can hear uh, when I'm, I've been working and we've got a little, a little bit of a breeze. These dropping, and if you look at it, it's just starting to open this one, and it's amazing how some can drop, and the they're still green like this one i mean this one's pretty be beautiful if you look at it it's cracked open there and if we open it up i mean how phenomenal is that for mother nature two side by side beautiful conkers making like a whole circle i find that phenomenally beautiful now none of these seem to be getting eaten by any form of animal um i think back home they might have been eaten by uh, squirrels because obviously we've got hundreds and hundreds of grey squirrels but I've not seen any squirrels here up to now hedgehogs I keep seeing my little hedgehog at night time but look at this one I mean this one's beautiful you know you've got three there all packed in I think this is triplets in uh, our terminology but then they're coming out there and they're, they're be beautifully shiny wonderfully shapes all different but you're asking what we're going to do with them so the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree so that would give me probably i don't know we're talking odds here 50 let's say by the time the harvest is finished end up with 100 conkers i've got 100 conkers within the foliage span of the tree so that's just going to put more stress on this tree because they're going to be wanting the water come next summer and to grow so what i'm thinking all trees strive for light and i'm no expert on this but i have boundary 
hedgerows and it's got a lot of uh, black currants in it brambles as we call them so i'm going to put these all in a bucket probably next week and i'm going to walk around the peripheral of my field and i'm going to dump them as we go all the way around uh try and do it equidistantly and just dump them into the uh, hedgerow and hopefully then with the frost and the rain and one thing or another they'll find their way to the to the floor level and hopefully we'll uh, start to grow and then over time the legacy that we'll be leaving here on this property hopefully is that we may end up with as i've done the same with a lot of acorns that i've been finding on the other tree well that's further away from the house i, I picked up probably a big bucket filled it two or three inches full of acorns and i've thrown them all around so if i throw all these conkers i'm hoping that some of them will actually uh, take root and grow into full trees and that will give more trees to this property on the peripheral <coughs> i could because i have a an absolute load of scrap tires which are just holding up an old fence at the minute uh, there are a few little baby oak trees growing i could if i start to, if i get my wish and get a tractor uh, and i cut the grass myself i could potentially put these tires around the small oak trees for them to grow but ideally i just want trees to be growing so my little video today is what i'm going to do with these because it just seems such a shame for them to drop here where really i could disperse them around a little bit and have trees growing where there are no trees go growing which to me would be a better thing i mean i've got one here look at that it looks like a little little penny uh, i can't have it open while we're talking that's my neighbor's donkey by the way uh, the farmer so that's what i'm going to do with my harvest of conkers over the next couple of weeks and obviously that's why i'm aiming to do with my land just maintain it for now and at some point when i sell a house somebody else will take on the, the looking after it and maybe they'll create a, a bigger permaculture or if you've got any thoughts on what i should do with it whilst i'm here busy renovating my house then feel free to uh, put some comments down there and please uh, subscribe if you have time and you're interested in what i'm getting up to here in france and we have rain coming so i'm gonna finish here and uh, pop inside and take me and the dog inside but that's my plans with uh, conkers and i hope you enjoy me helping the planet hello and uh, a little update now on uh, my conkers probably five days has gone by and we've had uh, thunder storms wind you name it so when you actually look at the tree now there's there's not many conkers left on there the, the horse chestnut tree yeah horse chestnut tree anyways i have a, a new addition to the uh, the clan here uh i called him tiger bear so we've got trev oh he was here a minute ago anyways uh what i'm gonna do now i've got two buckets of conkers there or thereabouts this bucket I've counted out and there's 565 conkers in that one so I don't know if you can see them but 565 in there and what I've done I've had a little wander around my the perimeter of my field and uh, it's 1250 steps so it's working out about 2.2 uh, strides and if I throw a conker into the brambles and into the the hedgerow i'm hoping that they'll grow because obviously here the conkers are dropping and some of them are landing in the shells maybe the shells are a bit of protection for them going into the winter and the leaves but ultimately they're getting semi buried in the ground so my understanding is they need the frost they need the, the cold and everything but i don't want to put them where it's too too wet because uh, obviously they'll rot then uh, so one bucket's going to my friend to make uh, soap with. Uh, that'd be interesting. So they're going to make soap with that bucket. And this bucket I'm going to put around the peripheral uh, of the field so we can maybe possibly start with uh, a permaculture of conkers and uh, 
horse chestnut trees and oaks because there are some oaks around the edges and obviously along this fence line here I've got a load of spare tyres so I might drop one in all the spare tyres and just leave nature to do its thing. Now I'm also going to I'm going to plant these obviously uh, probably tomorrow plant them disperse them but this sycamore uh, that's from Preston Prison that and uh, so it's an English sycamore not a French one uh, but it's been a bit abused it was cut here on its main stem this one's taken over so over time I'm hoping it'll grow into one reasonable big tree with a, a normal trunk over time and obviously it'll get bigger and bigger uh, but that one I'm going to put in the far corner over there bring it out a bit maybe six meters and plant it there because now everything's cooled enough and that bit of ground there is generally uh, damper uh, a bit soggier in the winter uh, it was when I came in February so that's going in there it doesn't need to be that deep because obviously it's been in a pot this summer because I couldn't plant it because it was too hot uh, but I will give you a little recap I took some uh, I think the rash and there was about five ash trees growing right next to my house when I arrived so I dug them all up dug them up as best as I can and there's definitely three growing in the top fence fence line so to finish this video off I'm gonna obviously try and take you up there and show you that they're they've survived the summer basically and I think that's a, a very good positive for, for next year and for the longevity of them to grow so rather than killing them uh, just discarding them throwing them on a bonfire uh, I've actually got three I think they're ash trees growing but anyway let's just say uh, a goodbye from for now and goodbye from this little fella who's attacking me but I don't think he's gonna jump or is he Maybe if I lower myself down and we finish this video, say goodbye. Hello, and uh, I think this is the last chapter in my amazing horse chestnut tree. And the reason I'm going to call it my amazing horse chestnut tree is that I started off with around 100 conkers that had uh, harvested from the tree in the beginning of this video. And subsequently, I've ended up with two big big buckets of conkers and the totals around about 1400 conkers and I am flabbergasted amazed I can't tell you how my thought process or process is on that one and believe it or not there's still a few more to uh, to drop from the tree and I'll just either leave them where they fall or put them down the center of my field where there's like a, a little gully where the land meets from one side to the other it's like a gentle rolling if you can imagine with a very slight little valley in the middle so i might throw them along there so i end up with a nice row of trees in the middle but anyway we're at the top of my field here you can probably see my fence line behind me and this tree uh, i think it's an ash well this one there was about three or four of them at the front of their my house and i'm probably reiterating here but this is the actual trees now so this one has uh, survived the summer, which in my opinion, I, I planted it April, March, April time, wrong time of year to be moving trees, but I really didn't want to burn it on a bonfire or cut it up and let it rot. So it's had a fighting chance and I think it's won the fight for life. Uh, it's not perfect. It was damaged before I even got here with the main uh, stem damaged. The other one there's another one there that's the same and i think there's two in here so I've, put, I've got four on this fence line and as you can see there's no trees here and i'm quite happy with that because i've gained four trees and i like trees so i've split my 1400 conkers some of obviously like i previously said i go into my friend to make soap and the 700 that i've got are going to go all the way around the edges of my my field uh, to hopefully grow and i've crushed all this uh, nettles and whatever you've probably got one meter one and a half meters of i don't know what how you'd explain it brush not grass anyway uh, stinging nettles thistles brambles you name it you're losing probably one and a half meters 
of your field. So my theology thinking here now is that if I throw the conkers into this undergrowth, that's the right word, undergrowth, that hopefully they'll, uh, with the frost, they'll germinate and they'll grow. So if I end up with 700 conker trees growing, horse chestnuts, that is a lot. Uh, but you can always thin them out, you can use them for firewood, so they'll have some use and then you can leave the, the biggest, the strongest uh, to grow and then once they, they start getting big enough, they'll shade out this undergrowth and the undergrowth won't survive them because it won't be getting any sunlight. Uh, but the trees, in my opinion, will look far nicer, like ring fencing your, your, your property. So it's a bit of a legacy job, this, because uh, I, I don't think I'll be able to see them in the full full growth, but somebody will. And, and all human beings will uh, gain the benefit of the oxygen and help stop global warming. So 700, if I get 350, I'd be super happy. So that's the, the job this afternoon, this September, 23, 24 degrees, lovely. Nine degrees at night time, so it's getting cold. We're getting autumnal now. So I'm hoping it's the right time to get all these dispersed and hopefully they sink to the bottom of this uh, brush and they can do their natural nature thing but I'll just give you I'll spin the cab around just to give you a bit of an idea uh, and this is this is what what we have basically uh, and over this side I've got towards the, the dead oak tree I've got uh, brambles so I'm just gonna chuck them all in the brambles basically and uh, over time, hopefully they'll uh, shade out the brambles and the brambles will disappear. Uh, what else have I got to say on this? I'm going to probably put this on time lapse and you can probably see me walking around a bit of the uh, the field or maybe uh, I got go down the middle, uh, come back round so you can have a, a see under view on the time lapse. And uh, I think we're all good there. Hopefully you, you enjoy it and uh, you'll subscribe beautiful day though blue sky everywhere can't be so so that's us Well, I hope I've systematically uh, dispersed 700-ish conkers around the peripheral of my fields and uh, the rest is up to Mother Nature and we'll see what my amazing horse chestnut tree over yonder brings to fruit. Anyways, you can enjoy the background now. If you watched all that time lapse, you get to see the view on a September day afternoon.